Okay, hello everyone that's in the audience. Uh, I think we're about at time to begin. So, CMAC, if you are sure. ready. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Hi, all. So, I'm Siamak Bazaga from the uh, Boston Super Convict Center and Text Mining Unit. So, I'm today I'm going to speak about our tools as practice. That is the extraction of the information on the diagnosis of a stroke from a Spanish electric, uh, electronic health reports. Uh, so, uh, so practice is a Spanish clinical text mining systems. Uh, we want uh, to develop a, an intro, uh, interoperable uh, text mining system to assist in the process of extraction, extracting relevant information from hospitals discharge reports of the patient diagnosed by a stroke and gradually improve the quality of transforming narrative discharge reports into a structure uh, clinical data representations and uh, finally uh, generating good practice recommendations. So uh, let me first speak about what is the text mining. So it's something that is very similar to each other, data mining and text mining. So data mining, for data mining, we need a structured data that usually are in the numeric form. But text mining, uh, in the text mining, we deal with unstructured data in form of natural language data. And also uh, in the text mining, we retrieve what is hidden in the text and present distilled knowledge in concise form and also discover and extract knowledge from unstructured data. And also we extract non-trivial uh, information of new information uh, from natural language data collections. And also text uh, mining applications integrate natural language processing components, such as document retrieval, classifications, and so on. In the text mining Photoshop, as you can see in the picture, so we start with the uh, unsocial data, and after that we do some uh, apply some components such as uh, information retrieval or name entity recognitions and information extraction. So until uh, we get the knowledge discovery from the, the resource. Another uh, thing that is important in the uh, in domain the difference between biomedical domain or data and the clinical one. And as you can see in the uh, in the, this table, the document from the medical and clinical domain usually are the clinical health records or the medical literature or a drug labels and so on, or clinical trace. And on the other hand, the biomedical or biology documents are uh, scientific literature or free text in another database. And for the language, so in the editical uh, or clinical world, it can be any language. It's related to the country that is, you want to get information from them. But for the biomedical and biology, mostly it's English. And the difficult and challenge for the, especially for the medical and clinical is the use heavily abbreviations. And also we have a lot of misspelling and typo there. And also there is a lack of the punctuation marks there and also the grammatical problem in the sentence. And another problem for it is privacy in the clinical domain that we don't have that much in the biomedical uh, parts. They have some restrictions, but uh, it's mostly for copyright, but for the uh, medical is the privacy and uh, confidentiality. And so uh, the most data, especially in the Spanish uh, corporal clinical health domain is mostly 80% of health data is unstructured data. And for the Spain, uh, from the population of the 2.7 million people, we, every day we have uh, 200,000 clinical nodes. So let's speak with the data that we have it uh, for the, our case. Uh, for the so we have two different uh, structured data. So one of the uh, 
uh, discharge somebody is from the aquas that is from the 26 hospitals so we we have around the two uh, 2700 uh, discharge uh, somebody is from the aquas and also we have around the 600 reports from the sunny uh, hospital so you can see the percentage of the each hospitals and so we did some analysis in the data that we have so a minimum, uh, if you see in the, this table, the first row is the minimum of the uh, number of the tokens, that is was the 28. And uh, for example, for the last column is the number of sentences, it was the minimum was two. And the maximum was uh, uh, the number of the sentences, it was 573. Uh, uh, so is the, some information of the data we have it. And uh, uh, also it's not uncommon uh, for the same discharge summary to be written by different doctors and or uh, nurses, which explain the mixture of the languages in the same document in bilingual uh, regions. For example, here, the, the gray highlight is in the Catalan, the rest is in the Spanish language. And or sometimes it can happen the English also sent, uh, sent us in the uh, ethical history post. And another problem, it is uh, from the reports that we get, uh, usually they have to write a uh, different section in the different part, but usually they, didn't, they don't follow this structure. So it is uh, a mix of the different sections. So it's very important to find uh, which uh, sentence or program is related to which sections. It's a challenge that we have uh, to address. And uh, so uh, let me uh, explain again what we want to do. So we wanted to uh, have a text mining tools that serves as a link between the hospital and the primary care systems to reduce the time of spend, uh, spending the search for information and also duplication, diagnosis tests and unnecessary visit and also medical errors to reduce all of them. And also these tools is also useful for research and management and the quality of the care analysis. So for this uh, task that we wanted to uh, implement it, we use the CTEX framework that uh, Sean yesterday explained what this is it, so I don't go to details. And so, so for this reason, we have to use several components to reach uh, this goal that I explained uh, the thesis how we integrate it because we don't have these tools in the CTEX, native CTEX component, but we integrated them to CTEX. And so one of them is uh, the free rings wrapper that we have the sentence token, uh, we use the sentence uh, the, uh, detector and also the tokenizer and post tagger and dependency and the lemma from the free rings wrapper component. And also for the header tom, uh, that is the SRI for uh, it is useful for the SRI temporal expressions. And you can see here the output of the header time, for example, because uh, for the header time, uh, it needs the post tagger from the free rings wrapper and, uh, and also tokenizer, of course. And uh, so is uh, is the output of the header time. And also we normalize it in the some specific format that you can see in the note uh, uh, tag. And uh, uh, another one is the uh, fuzzy dictionary lookup that you can see here. We have the three columns. Uh, the first one is the SNOM net code, and the second is the archetypes, uh, the, the type of the we want to use it, and also the variance of the information. As you can see here in the, the second table, in the, for example, in the uh, uh, last row that you can see, we have the tag cranial, but there is a a typo problem that it is specific between I and L, but uh, the fuzzy dictionary lookup can detect it as the type cranial. And it's the same for the rest if you see the, some example. If it doesn't have the accent or has it, or there's the, some replacement uh, between them, so it can detect them. That I explained it uh, uh, last time. And is the output of the uh, the the tools that we use as a CTEX, HDMI, and also we added some uh, method for the BRAT output. And so here I'm going to first explain uh, some 
problems a bit uh, for the uh, some variables. So uh, we have several types of annotations that we want to detect, such as the date, time, and the diagnosis and associated variables, or also ranking variables and procedures and treatment. But uh, the problem mostly not mostly, but also we have the problem for the some ranking variables, that is for the end ranking and the miss here. Uh, that the problem is uh, for the this ranking variables, we have a formula for their scale, scales, which cause them to not be fully or correctly annotated. And they don't have any specific pattern. As you can see here, we have the several uh, formats for the, these numbers for, uh, with scores. And so it's a bit tricky to uh, collect really the Ruby system, expand uh, all of them. Uh, so in order to evaluate uh, our system performance, we uh, annotated a third of our data that is was around the 80, uh, 850 reports after discarding eleven reports. And uh, electrical health reports were expedited in 10 punches. Uh, the first six punches that it was around the 500 reports were doubly annotated by four experts. So that internal uh, inter annotator agreement uh, could be uh, monitored. The, uh, the shared manual annotations between the annotators were compared together and the disagreements were resolved either by uh, reconciling the manual annotations or by amending the Lube systems. As we shown in this table, uh, for the, the first six punches, you can see uh, inter, uh, inter agreement, annotator agreement score before and after of the consensus between annotators. The, the low inter and annotator agreement uh, scores showing the complexity of the some uh, Spanish uh, electrical health reports for the NERO. And also here, you can see the average of the number of added and uh, changed that is we, we only, uh, it happened only for if the, the annotators changed the, uh, uh, the span of the, the annotations, annotations and also the accepted annotations. So uh, I will repeat again, if I don't explain it well. So the first column is the added, that is show the counts, the annotations added by human annotators. And the change one is count is the pre-annotations modified by human annotators with the span, as I said, for the needs or some uh, is SCR uh, variables that is very hard to correct the, uh, the old scores. So they changed the span and the accepted column is the cons is the pre-annotations accepted the correct ones by uh, Ruby systems. So over time, you can see the number of the acceptance of the pre-annotations have been increased. Uh, so uh, as I said, the first 500 have been used for improving the Ruby systems. And the last four punches, that it was around the 350 reports, were used to uh, evaluate the Rubus system, uh, Rubus, uh, system uh, against the manual annotations. Uh, the, for the Rubus system, it, it is tough to take just 11 variables for the diagnosis uh, uh, and procedure variables, as you can see here because of the massive of variable and, uh, variety of the variable and the headers in the reports, because sometimes we have to only detect the some diagnosis in the specific uh, sections or so on, but the Ruby systems sometimes is to take everything in the, the whole the electric health reports. Sometimes it's easy to find, okay, it's happened only for a specific session, but sometimes it's not easy to find where it happened. So for this reason, the ESCO is not very well. And uh, so the main uh, contributions, it was the development and adaptation of the component in the CTEX for Spanish and also address the interoperability issues that I explained it yesterday. And analysis of the narrative records and the identification of aspects such as the heterogeneity and also its problem. And of course it is open source. And we are using uh, deep learning approaches and uh, we want to compare the result with the long processes step for the root based systems. 
because for the sum uh, variables, it's very easy to uh, do it with uh, Ruby assistance because it's easy to find the pattern. But for some of them, it's very hard, as you can you saw it in the last uh, uh, slides, that uh, the accuracy was low. So we want to use the deep learning approach to see uh, how it's going to be. And uh, uh, the, uh, this source is also is available in the old GitHub. And uh, you can uh, have access to it easily. And yeah, that's it. And thank you so much for uh, listening. And I will be happy if you have answered to ask your questions. OK, so it looks like, uh, well, first, uh, thank you very much. That was great. There's a question regarding uh, using Catalan and Spanish in the same note. How, yeah. How you handle that? So, uh, so, so we used uh, in the our dictionary uh, lookup. Uh, so, usually we have the 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 variables for the different languages. So, if you have the so here because we have the uh, Catalan and also we have the Spanish. So, we in the our uh, first dictionary dictionary. We put it the both together, and also we have to use some library for the different languages, so to know which of them is the better. So we mostly because it was clear uh, the, the words that we wanted to use. I mean, the, in the dictionary that we want to detect. So it's or so we have the version of the Catalan and also for uh, a Spanish version. So we put it in the files that we want to in the dictionary for the dictionary, and so we uh, detect them. Hmm. Thank you. So I think the next question is, during the evaluation process, what configuration changes were the most significant between batches? Uh, let me see. For instance, adding acronyms. Yeah, but for during the um, uh, process and configuration change. So uh, mostly we changed only the auditionary uh, files that we wanted. To annotate that because the golden first times it was in career so for the doctors because also the another problem it was between the doctors and uh, between the uh, annotators it was in career uh, they, they didn't have the agreement very well about the, what is the best solutions for this and also we want to use the, some deep learning methods but anyway so we when we did did uh, reach the agreement so we used or added this. Uh, the keyboard of the medical keyboard that they want be added in the auditionary. So the most uh, uh, change configuration it was for the dictionary to each time we add more data and because we have we reached the some uh, some data that we had it in the record line and after that we added in the uh, in the auditionary files. Okay, so I have a question. Uh, in, 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 I don't know what the number was for the slide, but the one with uh, inner annotator agreement on batches two through six, I think it was. One, it looked like one of the agreements, correct, on batch number five. Did that go down or is that a uh, typo? Uh, I have to check, but I uh, don't remember exactly, but I think uh, maybe it's typo. Uh, I have to check, I don't remember exactly, but I don't think it should be less. So yeah, I have to check. I don't know. Okay. I was just curious. Yeah, uh, I just noticed that one. Yeah, I have to check, but I think it's typo. It should be 86 maybe, yeah. And I have a comment and another, I suppose, begging question. Uh, I would like to say that those first several slides on uh, clinical text mining were probably the best I've ever seen. And I was just wondering uh, if you would mind people borrowing those. Of course, yeah, please. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, next question. How long did it take to annotate a note on average? Uh, 
Uh, <laughs> actually a long a bit. So every 10 days, we have the next bunch. So for each bunch, so we have every 10 hundred unique uh, uh, reports. So in every 10 days, uh, we have the new bunch, new bunches. But usually it takes a bit more because after 10 days, uh, the annotation is, it should be finished. And after that, we start to evaluate the result to see how it was the, uh, the manual annotations by annotators. Because sometimes there was some error by annotators to say the s -man. So we have to analyze the result. And after that, report them, okay, this uh, new uh, uh, variables is the new. So you added the new, we didn't, we didn't have in the our dictionary. And some of them you change it. So it takes also five days to uh, review or evaluate the, this result. And after that, so I think I can say for each bunch that it was 1,100 unique uh, reports, it takes 20 days, less than 20, 15 days, two weeks. Wow. And you have four annotators, correct? Uh, we have four, but uh, we have shared between two annotators here. Right. Okay. Uh, Peter would like to know what the qualifications were for the, your annotators. Were they physicians, informaticists? Uh, so they are doctor and the nurse. So we have one doctor and three nurses. Interesting. So, yeah, I think it's interesting that you were actually changing your system based on what the annotators were seeing. Yes, yeah. So actually, not changing, but improving uh, mostly right. in their result. So because you know the most challenge, the, the most uh, not challenge, but the most uh, change that we did it, it was in the dictionary files that we have it. Because as I explained uh, here, uh, let me yeah, it's here. So you can see in here is the R uh, files for the dictionary for the dictionary lookup. So uh, sometimes we have to add more variables, as I said, because I think the guideline for first time, it wasn't clear for the, the nurse and doctors or annotators to know. So uh, it takes a bit time to, okay, it is correct or not, which uh, uh, information they want to add it. And so it takes a bit time to improve this uh, uh, dictionary files. And also, so of course, in the middle of the this time, also I, I improved the fuzzy dictionary lookup, especially for uh, these needs to find some pattern, pattern to find of uh, find them, and also uh, for the typo and misspelling because I have to change the accuracy and also do some uh, improvement for the code to uh, detect the most uh, variables with the most uh, typo that is acceptable. Right, and that those changes are available in your GitHub repo, right? Uh, the changes I think is not, but I have the first. Um, uh, actually, it was so for each bunch, I I had the uh, the dictionary for for each bunch how many how what changed. So I had it in the GitHub account, but for the new uh, push that I did, I removed them. But uh, if I think it is necessary or is good for the rest, I can't uh, uh, push it again. Just change it for each bunch. Very good, thank you. Uh, um, the reason not no is not published yet. Uh, so yeah, but we have planned to publish yeah. But uh, if uh, uh, if you want, I can put it in the access uh, access somewhere and send the link in the I don't know somewhere. And could you please repeat the number of days it took for annotating documents? So uh, for. Our first task, it was 10 days, but uh, also after 10 days, so we have some uh, near one weeks to evaluate the result of annotators to find, okay, what is the disagreement and what is the problem of annotators? As I said, because some, especially for the first punches, annotators did some mistake for the select the X correct expand or the correct uh, typo because it happened, I think. They are not a lot, but anyway, we have to find them to have really clean uh, gold standard. So also we spend five days more for the this is for each bunch, and each bunch we have average 100 unique uh, reports. Sorry. It was a Disney movie, right? <laughs> The mobiles, yeah, sorry. Uh, so yeah, so the average 20 days for 100 documents. Wow.
Okay, we've still got uh, plenty of time. So are there any more questions? Ah, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> I actually know. So we have to continue this annotations part. So no, yeah, of course we don't have yet, but we are continue these steps to have more uh, annotations part. But the problem is for the foundation, for the money, for, to, we have to give to annotate those. But yeah, we are uh, thinking about that. But yeah, we want to have more data to have to test it because at the moment it's not enough. Right. Did you have a uh, future direction on one of your last slides? Uh, Maybe not. Maybe I'm imagining. Oh, I just, uh, I repeat, what was the main contributions? So. Ah, planning. We are planning to use deep learning approaches. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, but we should have more uh, uh, data. But yeah, as, as I said, we are continuing the annotations parts to reach that amount. So mm -hmm. I think we have at the moment, we have uh, 1,000. More than four thousand, but so we have to have two thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I think getting annotated notes is a big problem everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so maybe you said this, but uh, how much overlap was there um, for the same words being in both the Spanish and the Catalan dictionary? Uh, what does it mean to overlap? Uh, so it means they have the same words? Right. Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, but they have the, uh, the same. But I know the things, uh, uh, I don't remember exactly how many overlap we have, but we have some uh, Catalan that we wanted to take and also Spanish. But mostly, I don't know, I don't remember exactly. If, I don't know, Martin and Martha knows in the group here, let me know, but I don't remember exactly. Okay, thank you. Welcome, sorry. Oh, I was just curious. Yeah, yeah. So most of things we don't have any overlapping treatment there. Oh wow. Yeah. No overlapping clinical terms. That's amazing. So, uh, so I so I will think it's better uh, to explain again for the deep learning part. So uh, because the plan that we want to use it, we don't want to use all of the annotators uh, annotations for the deep learning part. Uh, we will try uh, to see how it's going, but the, the goal uh, for Armand is for some uh, uh, variables that is very hard for the rubric system to find the pattern for them we want to use the deep learning part to see if we can mix deep learning and the uh, rubric system together, how it's going to be. And uh, anyway, we need to have more data. Okay. I think that you've been reading the chat, am I correct in that? Yeah, so uh, yeah. are you planning to use this? Uh, let me so what step did you take to uh, for the pine, uh, uh, bad punctuation so uh, so we used the, uh, the tokenizer so mostly it takes all of them 
so as I explained in the, the previous uh, talk, so the problem for us, uh, for example, for furrings, if you have some uh, clinical keywords that, for example, for the eye, that is the uh, lateralizations uh, category that we want to detect, and also I in this Catalan is the and. So it was confusing if we did these two informations. Uh, so we added some rules in the art for the dictionary lookup to, uh, to handle this information. And also we applied the same uh, tokenizer for all of the R components, as, uh, such as the dictionary for the dictionary lookup, and also for the, the rest that if we need it. For, for example, for the expert checker, uh, net. So it solved the problem of the mixing of the punctuations and abbreviations word. And uh, yeah. And also, as Martha mentions, we have another additional problem that it was converting from the PDF to text because the report was in the original, it was in the PDF. And during the, this conver, uh, conversion, uh, conver, uh, converting to text, we have also a problem for like if we miss a spelling and the, uh, the problem that is happening in the text. So also uh, for the, uh, using the system for the cares yeah so we uh, insert in the docker files uh, in the docker image and uh, so the plan is uh, to install this docker in the hospitals uh, 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 computers uh, and to use them uh, easily with this Docker. And uh, also, uh, my colleague's plan is uh, developing uh, the Brad version, not Brad, but a uh, web service version of the, these tools to help them, the doctors, to select the, the repos. And after that, see the annotated files. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, so it's the, I also is available in the GitHub. So you have the Docker uh, image for each of them. Uh, for each uh, for these tools to use it in the real case and because the problem it was for the security part the, the hospitals do, uh, don't want to uh, use the api and so on because of the security so we create this uh, image uh, docker uh, files to uh, insert in their computers and they can easily uh, test and use it Okay, so in terms of PDF to text conversion, what what problems did you have? I'm just curious. So uh, mostly if we have the table, so we miss some information from the tables. And another problem it was from the some, uh, in the converting, we miss some formations. For example, we have the space between the words and so on. So we have more typo there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, from the tools for the PDF to text, uh, something that uh, uh, I think uh, I um, I don't know I didn't use it because it was converting the text that I use, but uh, if Martin knows which tools they did use. Mm. Uh, yeah, Mart also don't remember it. But also for the, because also we have another uh, PDF files as well, uh, because also we want to uh, uh, dev, uh, 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 train the model for the, the a BRAD one for the Spanish BRAD biomedical domain. Uh, so we use the uh, the library for, for Python with the PDF minor uh, library that we, are, we use for the converting from the PDF to text. So I think it was acceptable, but yeah, as we have also some problem for this library as well, especially for the tables and so on.
Okay. So is Dika is from the PDF to text? Yes. Perfect. I haven't used it in quite a while, and I think it um, might still have problems with things like tables. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it, it tries to identify them based, I think, in large part uh, on caption, but I can't remember. I see. So I, I remember also uh, uh, Amazon also has this, some service for the PDF to text that I heard is very good, but I think is not for free. Uh, but yeah, it also has the sound tools. Hmm. Uh, let me check what was the name of Amazon tools. Yeah, text, uh, text tract, I think. I will write it here, um, maybe for the rest. It seems also is. Hmm. Yeah. But I think it's not free. But I heard it's very good. Okay, so good. So also I will test the Tico to see how it's going for the Spanish and Catalan reports. Okay. We have a few minutes left, so hurry and get in those questions. Uh, for the bitter questions, yeah, also we have some problem first in our tools, but not anymore. So because we have also some scene and so on for the indications uh, in the complex sentence, but not too much. But uh, for for all uh, words that we want to take, no, we didn't have any challenge for that one. That's a good question. Uh, yes, of course, yeah. So we have the guideline uh, um, protocol, how they have to do that. Uh, and, but yeah, so uh, for, for, reason, for example, if you see in the tables, I didn't in the tables, I didn't add the first bunch because for the first bunch, it was more test to, uh, it was the 25, 25 reports for all of the, same for all of the annotators. And so with the guideline that we prepare for them to test it and check the results. So for reason, I didn't add the, the first punch here because it was mostly the test for the guideline to be, you know, to reach one agreement between annotators. Oh, <laughs> nice comment. <laughs> we, <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, a lot. Yeah, we had we had a lot of discussion with them. Okay, well, uh, we are. The bell is tolling, so it's time to call it into this one thank you again cmac this was excellent another excellent presentation thank you um, i'm hoping to see more from you in the future sure thanks a lot all right thanks everyone bye
Thanks. Thanks.